tonight on Skyhawk Scoreboard. Women's track and field sets new records at the Maroon Classic in Grand Junction. Our Skyhawks golf team has been enjoying some Colorado weather and hitting the greens, while our ladies Skyhawk softball team gears up for some games this upcoming weekend. Stick around to get the rundown on this week's edition of Skyhawk Scoreboard. Hello and welcome to Skyhawk Scoreboard, your FLC comprehensive guide to sports. I'm Meryl Ramsey. And I'm Haley Knipple. And tonight we will be bringing you updates on the cross softball track and golf. Well, this spring, FLC gave birth to the women's track and field team. You know, they were hanging up flyers all over the place. They were asking girls to join the team. They even asked me if I wanted to join the team. And did you, Meryl? Well, you know, I'm not very interested in running around in circles all day. But have you ever wondered why they do that, Haley? Yeah, actually, I have. Why is it a circle? You know, I'd guess probably because running around in squares is not very easy. You know, I bet you're right, Meryl. Those sharp turns probably just take one too many seconds off their time. Definitely. But nevertheless, some FLC women went out for the team, and this past weekend at the Maroon Classic in Grand Junction, the team went on to collect eight new records. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Junior Stephanie Dexter set two records, one in the 100-meter dash with 13 and a half seconds, and then the 200-meter dash just under 28 seconds. Another record came in at the 4x400 relay <laughs> at the time of 4 minutes and 19 seconds. And even some track and field events gained new records, such as the high jump, Devin Clocker, Cleared 1.3 meters, Alexis Cox high jumped just over 5 meters, and Carly Wendowski threw the discus 28.2 meters and the shot put 9.7 meters. Volleyball starting setter of two years, Heather Danny actually threw the javelin 33.9 meters. She is also a part of the track and field team. The next meet is May 1st in Pueblo, Colorado for the Armac Outdoor Track and Field Championship. You know, Haley, I'm so happy that we have a track team now. So many girls are on that team really having a good time. Yeah, and track is very beneficial. When you're running, it's getting your cardio up, helping your heart, getting your legs pumping. And, you know, I actually think it's actually good for the ground, too. You know what? It makes the ground feel needed, appreciated. Very important. <laughs> now moving right into Skyhawk softball. Unfortunately, I don't have very much good news for you. This past weekend in Grand Junction, our ladies went up against the Colorado Mesa Mavericks. Although the ladies scored a total of 20 runs in the games, they couldn't come out on top. Tristan Gilbert had a three-hit home run to bring in three of her teammates. That is a grand slam. Very impressive. Giovanna Rios also had a grand slam in one of the games. Brought the team up to 5-4, a lead, but then fell shortly after that 5-8 Mavericks. That puts our girls 11-17 and 17 in the RMAC, 10th place in the league. But they will have a chance to improve their record this upcoming weekend in Colorado Springs where they play Colorado Mines. Let's hope for the best, Haley. Let's do, Meryl. You know, with the season wrapping up and the end of the school year drawing near, all those girls are going to have to say goodbye to each other, say goodbye to the sport, say goodbye to the season. You know, it's always kind of sad when the year ends. How do you think they're going to keep in touch? Well, I imagine that those softball girls will just have to touch base every now and then. <laughs> we are going to head on to men's lacrosse, who took a fall to Metro State on Saturday, April 11th. Final score coming in at 14-10. to 10. Metro's best player of the game was Josh Davis, a sophomore from Highlands Ranch, Colorado. He scored six of the team's total goals for the game. The Skyhawks' best player was Max Siegel, a junior from Littleton, Colorado. He scored three goals and had five assists in the game against Metro, but unfortunately it just wasn't quite enough to get the Skyhawks the win. Metro's team is 3-0 and zero in, the R in the Rocky Mountain Lacrosse Conference and 8-1 and one overall, making them the leaders of the Division II Southeast Conference. Our boys are in second to them at a 2-1 and one in the RMLC and a 5-4 and four overall. The boys have an away game in Denver at the Dick Sporting Goods Field on Saturday the 18th against Johnson and Wales University, which is primarily a culinary school. Culinary school, Haley? Is that what I really heard from you? Yeah, you did really hear that. And I've got to wonder how in shape culinary students are going to be for a lacrosse game. <laughs> you know, I bet they have a nice halftime snack whipped up for the players. You know, I bet they do. Can you imagine the kinds of homework that culinary students have, Meryl? You know, I can't. Oh, man, I'm so stressed. I have to make three pies, an omelet, and some whipped cream all before Wednesday. Well, hopefully our Skyhawks don't get turned into a turkey dinner next weekend. <laughs> Let's hope not. We're going to go ahead and move on to the girls' game now. On Friday, April 10th, the women's lacrosse led Lindenwood University at two different times during the game, but the Lions came out victorious 20-7. This must have been exciting for them because they finished the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference season undefeated at 6-0 and won the Armac regular season for a second time in a row. With the loss, the Lady Skyhawks moved to a 6-3 overall and a 2-1 in league games. Taylor Cabrera was the top player of the game, scoring all four of the Skyhawks' first half goals, marking a career high for the freshman. Sarah McMahon netted a seventh and final goal of the game for the Skyhawks, and on April 12th, the Fort Lewis College women's 
lacrosse team led, an six, led all 60 minutes of the game to post a 14-5 win at the Rockhurst University. The win improved to improve the Skyhawks to 3-1 and one and in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and 7-3 and three overall. Rebecca Miller, a sophomore at the Fort, was a top player of the game with three goals and an assist. Fort Lewis recorded 21 of their 28 shots in the first half to outshoot Rockhurst 28-12. Definitely a great game for the Skyhawks. They will play the remainder of their three regular season games at home, the first of which will be against Regis University on Friday, April 17th at 4 p.m., followed by Sunday's match against Colorado State Pueblo at 1 p.m. So Rockhurst and Lindenwood. I've never heard of either of these teams, Meryl, but I'm sure they say the same about us. Yeah, well, they don't know what they're missing. You know, they definitely don't. We have it pretty good here. They say the people are nice in the Midwest, but I think that we might have them beat with all of our hippie love here in Durango. It's true. Durango's a great place. We are happy to be Durango Tangs. That is very true. On April 14th, the Fort Lewis College men's golf team recorded a final score of 319 in the third and final round of the Regional Crossover Invitational in Littleton, Colorado, finishing the tournament with a fifth place score of 957 strokes. Michael Thomas, a sophomore who's 6'8", led the Skyhawks with 234 strokes, placing him in 15th place overall. Maybe he should be playing basketball. I mean, with height like that, we definitely need a new chief next year. So That we do, Haley, but those are some big shoes to fill. I don't know if we can just replace the chief like that. I think we're going to need to audition his chief face in order so to do too. that. What's your chief face, Meryl? <laughs> you know, maybe it should just be you. <laughs> you know what? I'll let him know. So, Meryl's going out for the men's basketball team, but we are going to move on. Host team Colorado School of Mines won the team title, carding an 882, and the ore diggers Nick Berry and John Ahern tied for first place with 216 strokes. The Skyhawks will compete next on April 20th and 21st at the Armac Championships in Goodyear, Arizona at the Golf Club of Estrella. Ooh, that sounds pretty nice. The Golf Club Estrella, the Golf Club of the Stars. Yeah, man, that is Very a nice. tournament that I would definitely want to go to. Me as well, Haley. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Skyhawk Scoreboard. I'm Haley Knipple. And I'm Meryl Ramsey. And until next time, see, see you in the stands. stands.